Hello, this is Peter Entwistle um, with the third episode in this little series that I'm doing on the basics of making websites. Um, so, as promised, uh, we're going to be going over the basics of CSS. So this is what we're left with from the previous video. Um, soon, I'm going to add a new section to my website um, where it's going to have the video for these um, for each of these tutorials and below it it's going to have the source code that you can just copy and paste if you want to check um, with your own um, for example if you had any mistakes or if you didn't save the last one and you wanted to carry on okay so as I was saying this series isn't going to teach you everything about HTML and CSS it's just going to give you the basics um, to help you get started with it um, and as I go through making um, a very basic web page I will um, go through all the any little extra bits that we have that we haven't covered yet um, so let's get into CSS now as I mentioned in I think it was the last video CSS stands for cascading style sheets and basically it's just what we use to um, change the look of the, the web page so so basically you're targeting um, different elements and giving them different properties like um, a font color or um, where it's positioned on the the page okay so I'm gonna add a style element in the head section um, In between these opening and closing style tags, um, it's where we're going to be placing all the CSS. Okay, so I wanted to target all the first heading elements in my page, which there's only one on this page, but all I've got to do is type h1, then I put a space, and an opening curly bracket. You can actually do the whole thing on one line, but I prefer to uh, put them on separate lines. So you close off with another curly bracket. So in between is where I'm going to add the property. So now I'm going to have a declaration. I'm going to give this header element a font size of 50 pixels. So as you can see, it's now made my header tag um, 50 pixels so what this is doing is this is the selector which is telling the browser which element I'm targeting and then this is known as a declaration um, this is the property and this is its value after the property that we're given it you put a colon and then you type the value and then a semicolon to finish and then for the next declaration you just go down one line and then type in the next one you'd like to add for this specific element so I might want to give this a color of um, I'm going to give it a red as you can see it's now changed it to the color red Oh, by the way, um, color in CSS is spelt the American way, so you make sure you don't put a U in. Okay, so what I want to do is I want this text section here um, next to my profile picture. So I can do this in CSS, but first, before I do, I need to add another div that I forgot to add last time. So just below the profile picture div, we're going to have another div and I'm going to give it an ID of about and then I'm going to go down to bottom of this unordered list and close off the div and then all I've got to do is highlight that and tab it in so now I've got this 
So this is all contained in this div here. So that was just to basically um, enable me to target this div element and this one here um, so I can put them next to each other. To target a particular ID you have to type a hash symbol sometimes known as the pound symbol um, and then you type in the ID and then just as before we just go down a line close off the curly bracket and then in between I'm going to type I'm going to give it a property of float and then it's going to be left okay so as you can see it doesn't quite look right yet so we've got to give the about to div a property of float and a value of left as well so just to save time I'm going to copy and paste what we've already got and just change this to about and we have the div here floating next to my profile picture I don't really want this to be right next to the profile picture I want a bit of a gap in between so to do that all I've got to do is add a margin so for a margin you can either type a property of margin and then you can assign it a top, right, bottom and left value or you can give it a margin left or a margin right so if I want to give this profile picture a margin of 15 pixels on the right I just type in margin right and then 15 pixels so we now have this 15 pixel margin between them okay so it, it's looking a bit better but I still don't like this font this default font and okay so let's preview this in Google Chrome so as you can see it looks just the same except if you look at the top and the left there's a tiny little margin around it I didn't give it any margin but this is what the browser does by default okay so if say for example I had a menu bar or some kind of header at the top and I wanted it to be right up to the top here it would have this little white margin at the top and at the left and the right which I don't really want so if you have a look at my one of my websites I made this menu bar here goes right to the top and right to the left and right so to do that all we have to do is type in the body element and give it a margin of zero pixels okay so we're now going to view this in Google Chrome and as you can see it goes right to the top and right up to the left okay so the body element which houses all the code for the what's going to be on the screen um, has a margin of zero pixels now so if I want to set the font for every little part of the page all I need to do is put it in the body section so I can type font family that's font dash family okay, I'm going to choose one of these font families um, basically what this is going to say is this is the first font that's going to use if it doesn't have that one it's going to go and use Helvetica um, in this case and if it doesn't have that it will go to sans serif and it doesn't if it doesn't have any of those fonts at all it will just go to the default font that the browser has set if you don't have Dreamweaver you're going to have to put these in manually and you don't have to use these specific ones um, but I usually just use the preset ones 
Baron Dream either. Except if I'm making, if I want to embed my own custom font that I know isn't going to be on the computer of the user. In another tutorial, I'm going to show you how to embed your own font, so one that isn't supported by most browsers, um, so you can make some better looking websites. Um, so I could have chosen any any font really. Um, so I could use this one. Now, if you if you have a look at this one here, um, this Times New Roman has um, quotation marks around it. And that's because it contains white space. So it's just to help it understand that this is one font. But I'm going to use this font family here. Okay, so now we've got this, we've set the font and we've changed the color of that and the size. So how about this unordered list? I don't really like the bullet points at the side here, so I'm going to get rid of these. So first of all, I can either target the list element um, or I can target the list element within this um, this div with the ID of about. So basically, I would type the about with a um, I'd type the hash sign or pound sign about just like we did before. Then I would type li. So I'm telling it to target the list the list element within the about div because it has the ID about and then um, all we need to do is give it a list style of none so then it will get rid of these bullet points um, now there's also this underlining going on here and that's to do with the link element. By default, links are automatically have a value of underline. So to get rid of that, we could target the about a element, the link element, and then we just type in text decoration and we give the value of none just like we did with the list style. And there we go, it gets rid of the underline. If I got rid of the about on both of these, it would still look exactly the same. But the reason we have it is so, we're telling it that it's specifically only list elements in the, with the ID of about. So if I was to create a, a link outside, in fact, So if I was to create a link outside of this div here, I'm just going to copy that one and paste it. As you can see, it still has an underline. Um, it's still underlined because it doesn't have the... It's not getting this declaration of text decoration, none. So it's still showing the underline because it's not inside the div. So you'd use this... Um, if you had lots of different links and you wanted them to display differently or um, different list elements and you want them to display differently we'd use this, uh, we tell it specifically which one we want okay so I'm going to get rid of this CSS property for each one I don't like that what I'm going to show you how to do is how to make your CSS in an external style sheet. So all you're going to do is copy it and remove it or cut and get rid of the style tags. Still within the head um, element we're going to have a, a link and it's going to have a attribute of rel which is going to equal style sheet. Then we're going to give it a 
type of text slash CSS. And then finally, we just have a href to tell it where the external style sheet is going to be. And for this, I'm going to call it, it's going to be in a directory called style. And then it's going to be called style.css. Now we haven't made this folder or um, this style.css yet, but that's what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so we're going to create a new CSS document. Um, you don't need that really. Just paste it in. And then I'm going to save it. In the style folder, we're going to call it style.css. Oh yeah, um, just remove that forward slash, we don't need that. It's a, it should look exactly the same, and I'll view it in the browser in a minute. But we've now externalized the CSS file. Now we externalize our CSS so if we have a hundred pages and we want the same kind of layout all we need is one style sheet and we can just ch if we want to change the font color for example we just have to change it once rather than going every single page and changing it on there so this just gives us a nice little um, makes it easier to so this just makes it easier to change anything down the line which you're probably going to need to do at some point. Okay, so last bef before I finish this um, video, I just want to point out that you can actually use what's called inline CSS. Now, what inline CSS is, you basically just add a style attribute to any element that we want to target. So I can just do the same as we do in CSS, so we can give it a font color. We can give the color of so we can give it a color of I don't know green, and it will do exactly the same as when we have it in the external CSS. We're not going to use inline CSS very often. In fact, we probably won't be needing it at all. But I'm just letting you know that you can actually do that. Okay, so I think that's all I'm going to show you for this tutorial because I realise how long this tutorial has already gone on for. I don't want to make these videos too long. Okay, so in the next tutorial, we're going to carry on with the code we've got here and I'm going to go a little bit faster and um, try to set up a, a page that looks more like a social network a fake one um, but just to give you an example of how to set up your own page using HTML5 and CSS and then after we've made it look more like a proper website we're, um, I'm going to explain about how to get your website onto the web um, if you're not familiar with that already. Um, I'm probably going to start a new series on PHP, just the basics of PHP, and showing you why PHP can be very useful. Thank you for watching this video. hope it was useful, and um, if you're not already, feel free to subscribe, and um, I'll be making some more tutorials very soon.